I remember at a Maker Fair, I had a father come up to me and, and, and uh, say hello. And he's with his son. And he, he said, you know, I knew nothing about 3D printing a couple of years ago. But I read about this, and I wanted to make a, son, a hand for my son. And his, his son, you know, raised a, a 3D printed hand that was red and had some kind of superhero logo on it. And, you know, if you know if you have a kid, you're going to have to create different versions of these because the kid changes. And this, uh, it's, it's something that's very much in need of, of being customized. And so it really is empowering people to do something completely outside the medical manufacturing, you know, industry. Um, and, and most of them feel blocked by that industry, and they're getting involved. And, you know, the m model ha here, ha you know, they say it looks terrible and it has wires hanging out of an Arduino and a, a kind of a black plastic hand. But it, it, it's, it's a signal that people can do things themselves. Lisa Marie Wiley is a veteran who lost a leg in, a, in, a, uh, in, in Afghanistan. She came back and didn't like the prosthetic she was, you know, uh, uh, um, given and, uh, and felt it was, you know, it was too big and too awkward. Well, she and a couple others got together and designed and 3D printed their own, her own prosthetic. It's, it's her own. It's her design. And then last year at Maker Faire, we had a fashion show. And uh, it was wonderful to see 3D printed prosthetics as a fashion statement not just as a functional thing. And that's the kind of thing a maker community can do with things, is, is they, they, what they make is really a form of self-expression often. It's, it doesn't just solve a problem. It often is, is a, uh, a sign of who they are. It's a story about what they can do. Uh, Nick Pinkston is, uh, I think, creating a factory of the future in San Francisco. Um, his idea is uh, you don't necessarily have 3D printers or, or things in, in your house in, in, or at work. He wants it to be easy for you to design a part and then have it made. He's trying to actually eliminate the contract engineer, contract manufacturer in the middle. He wants to automate a factory so that, first of all, when you're in your CAD program, you're getting feedback on whether the part you're designing can be manufactured and whether he can manufacture it for you. And then he's, he's um, actually, um, I didn't put that in there. Then you send it to him, and it's like sending, you know, an order to Amazon. He's, you're just sending him a file, but he's able to produce that. And what he's eliminated is a lot of the handwork that involves setting up a part um, so that it can be affordable to make one of something. Another example is Abricate. Uh, it's a relatively new startup in San Francisco. And again, this is a model of matching designers and fabricators. But uh, 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 Mark Roth, who started this, told me, you know, going into Super Bowl week in San Francisco, an order came in that they needed by Friday 10,000 signs. Um, and they needed vinyl cutters to do that. And there was nobody that they knew of that could produce 10,000 signs in, um, in a few days. And what Abricate did was, was slice that into different orders and found that there were several companies in the area that could do 2,000 signs and um, aggregate that together and get the order made. So there's really different ways of doing this. One uh, last one, OpenDesk, is uh, doing furniture. Um, uh, uh, here's a de here are designers, uh, open source designs. Anybody could download this. But they're also connecting you to a network of makers who will fabricate that custom design for you. So in many ways, this is the new IKEA. Um, instead of buying the standard part, you can buy something online and then actually have someone make it for you. So I'm out of time here, but just briefly, the, the, I think the maker movement is, is helping to shape the future. I think it's, it's extremely important. I've talked a little bit about the, the manufacturing and production changes that we see uh, of really sort of combining digital and physical and the whole idea of opening up manufacturing to more and greater participation uh, by uh, different people. Um, lastly, maker fairs. Uh, I mentioned the one in a week or so. Um, but we ha we'll have over 180 maker fairs around the world this year. A couple weeks ago in Paris, six weeks ago I was in, uh, in Cairo, Egypt, where we had 10,000 people coming um, for the second maker fair there. And it's, it's really interesting to see who's showing up, who wants to make things, and, and what they believe is possible now, because uh, both of this community and the way they're collaborating. 
Um, you'll see Adam Savage at Maker Faire. And you'll also see the Department of Energy. Um, this year we'll have eight of the 10 national labs represented and they want to connect to makers, work with makers, invite makers into the labs. And uh, as Kevin Nolan will be talking about later with GE First Build, I think there's a great opportunity to identify makers within companies and organizations and work with those makers outside of those organizations and really come up with really new innovative ideas.